Hey, everybody out there, you're tuned in to 91.8 The Fan. You're in my corner, and I have a returning guest in the corner. Would you like to unveil your not-so-secret identity? Indeed. Hello. Uh, I'm KG Tang. I'm a voice actor, and it's good to be back on the show. And it's awesome to talk to you again. I actually haven't... Usually I see you like once every year at Anime Vegas or something, yeah. <laughs> but I haven't seen you at a convention in a really long time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I haven't been to Vegas in a couple of years. I miss Vegas. Um, I only really go... Because I'm not too big of a convention person. I, I only really go to like two or maybe three conventions a year. And other times I'm just kind of here in L.A., you know, trying to pay rent. <laughs> hey, rent's a good thing. Sometimes, yes. sometimes conventions help with that. Or sometimes you can make your own merchandise and sell them at the conventions, which is a plus, Indeed. too. Indeed. I, I, I'm not... I was I was thinking about possibly selling like really stupid T-shirts that I can make drunk in the morning on Vistaprint or something like that, but <laughs> but I had like really off-colored ideas, and you know my my girlfriend would never let me do it. It's like you know, I was like you know what business cards are really boring. Like what if I made like business prophylactics? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, stuff like that. You know, and then sell it for like fifty cents each, and then get kicked out of the con, obviously. But yeah, um... I was about to say I don't know if the convention would <laughs> like that very much. I mean, there are mature conventions out there you could try it at. Right. I need to get invited to those like uh, what was the like the hentai cons and stuff. Are there hentai cons? I know like there's I know there's... plus encouraged conventions, but I've... yeah, I, I thought I saw like there was this advertisement for like a hentai con happening sometime in the future, and I was like, perfect business prophylactics. I don't know, like I I kind of get worried about the cosplay I would see at that convention because yeah, there I, wouldn't I would be any. <laughs> I would too. There should be a rule that only men should cosplay at those things, and then yeah. you'd be like, oh oh god. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, I can see <laughs> <laughs> Everyone is Man Fae. Aww. I miss Man Fae. When was the last time we saw Man Fae? I don't know, actually. I think that's more in Anime Boston territory. Yeah? Yeah, I, I, well, at least I think the really famous one is in Anime Boston, but I could be wrong. I don't know. There's so many Man Fae now, nowadays and sailor dudes and things yeah. like that, so, you know. But either way, we invited you onto the show to actually talk about games and not just uh, hentai conventions. Though it's a nice oh, I've been lied to. I'm sorry. We want <laughs> to talk about your glass balls, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I, I, I get that joke because I got that far in Danganronpa. <laughs> I, I, I got that joke just because I, I was, I, I'm a terrible person. I don't have a Vita yet, so I've been watching like playthroughs of the game. You need to get a Vita. It's so I know. pretty. It's so pretty. Oh. And also, the game is a lot of fun. I am. Um, I don't know if you're interested in those type of games or not, because I, obviously you're interested because you're in it. But I don't know if it's your type of style of uh, game. But it's a lot of fun, even if you're not a visual novel person. I've been. Mm -hmm. um, my my ten year old, my brother's ten year old, has been bothering me over my shoulder the entire time, being like, "Can I play? Can I play?" And I'm like, "No, you cannot play Saw Meets Phoenix, right?" <laughs> nice try, though. <laughs> not really suitable for your age <laughs> i mean it looks everything i've seen from it looks fantastic i mean the <laughs> the localization and the translation of some of the lines are like just amazing um like i uh, like everything i've read and everything i've heard sounds really great and i, I vita is pretty much on my next to buy list so i can actually get the game well now can you tell us a little bit about your character uh, yes, Hagakure. Um, he's, it, it's really funny the things you find online about him because, like, it, it goes anywhere from, like, stoner to, like, you know, like, alien conspir conspiracy dude. And I don't know, like, when, when I was watching the playthroughs, um, the, uh, the Let's Plays of the game, uh, I, every time he comes up, I just I just like laugh out loud because he has the most absurd things to say about any given situation they're in. Like I remember something like they were doing it. There was there was a trial, one of the class trials, and he's starting to like come up with all these theories. Like oh yeah, this happened, and oh obviously this, and he used this, and they're like, why do you say that? He's like I don't know. I just felt like it. <laughs> yeah. What, what, what do you mean? I, I think the character is really interesting. I've been hanging out with him a little bit during the free time. And during the free time, he's not as crazy. He's actually, you can undecipher what he's saying oh, yeah, he a little bit. Oh, yeah, makes sense. 
a little bit, not not to not to major extremes, but enough to where you can actually have a conversation with him. But I find the character really interesting because I haven't seen what his capabilities are yet in the game. Mm-hmm. I'm on the third trial, and I haven't seen him come out with like, oh yes, I predict this, and you know the whole psychic thing. Like I'm waiting for him to actually show his ultimate talent, and it right. hasn't I happened heard, yet. <laughs> I heard he's spot on in some of his predictions, though. Like I heard from random, like you know sites and you know rundowns of the game it's like oh yeah him he's great because during these parts of the game he makes a prediction and it's absolutely 100 percent true in a way you know so it's like through his dialogue he'll say something like i predict uh this will happen or this won't happen and then in its own weird way it won't you know what i'm saying um i'm not completely i sort of know what what that is but i don't know if that's a spoiler or not so i don't think i can say but that happens at least once or twice. Okay, I'll ha- I'll have to pay more attention to his dialogue and yeah. and get through the game. Like I have the Vita sitting right here. If I turn it on, it's on the save screen for <laughs> for the game, and I've been just trying to get through it as fast as possible because I'm I'm just like I have to get to the credits to find the missing two female voice actors. <laughs> <laughs> so close, so far away. We've confirmed yeah. so many of them at this point, but you know, <laughs> two of the females escape us. Why? I don't know if you guys play that game. I, we we play that game a lot on staff where we're trying to figure out like a voice cast or if you're playing a game yourself and you're like, hey, that sounds like so-and-so. Because we do that all the time. I That does that happens to me a lot. Like most of the games I pick up nowadays, I'll, I'll like literally just call someone up and it's like, hey, is that you? Hey, is that you? And they'll be like, yeah. And we're like, all right, cool. And then I'll just hang up. That's just <laughs> real, all I really needed to know. Um, yeah, that's a that's a fun game. Especially like when you know some of the people in the cast. And you can just do shit like that and be... Oh, I'm sorry. I I promised. I already promised I wouldn't cuss, and I already broke the rule. Um, it's okay. I got that blue button. You're fine. Excellent. You're fine. Uh, for those who don't know me, I'm a really bad cusser. Like, if you meet me in real life, don't be offended. I, I have nothing against you. I just cuss a, cuss a lot. Um, so, yeah, like, for example, I'm playing Bravely Default right now. And, like, every other, like, boss, I have to call up someone who's like, Is that you? That, that sounds like, Is that you? Yeah. Oh, okay. I killed you. I took your clothes. All right, bye. <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, Chris, my guest relations manager, has been stalking your progress in Bravely Default because he has <laughs> the game himself. And apparently, I, I guess you can visit or you can, like, joint kill something and he can see how much damage you do. Yeah, there's a there's a thing called the, like, Ability Link, Abba Link, something like that. And what it is is in battle there's an option to send whatever move you're about to do next into, like, the ether, and whoever has your information on their game can use you as, like, almost like a summon. Like, you can summon a friend, and they can do whatever move it is, right? So you have these friends who, like, you know, break the damage limit and are doing, like, 999,000 damage, which completely marginalizes the rest of the content of the game, but it's still fun, <laughs> you know? Um... Or, you know, there's even moves in the game where it's like, ne- next time someone summons you, uh, they get this amount of money. You know, you can send people money, which is pretty fun. Um, well, I-, I remember he was complaining to me because he's like, I've been playing this game since it came out. And I summoned, like, KG or I got I got his attack or whatever. And he did, like, four times the amount of damage I do. And I just, I wanted to cry myself to sleep or something <laughs> along those lines. He was really upset how much farther you were in the game than he was. That's not... Just it's not that I I think it's like there's um I'm gonna nerd out for a second here. There's a mechanic in the game. It's called like SP points or something like that. Usually, um, the max amount of damage you can do in really default is nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine, like a lot of Final Fantasy games. But there's this thing where if you use an SP thing, you can break that damage limit. And depending on what you do in combat, you can actually go to nine hundred ninety nine thousand. 999. So if you stack things like, you know, I make the enemy weak to this, and I make them weak to, like, physical attacks, and I give my thing the element of this that he's weak to, and then I, you know, blah, 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 blah. And you buff up and you stack up all these things, you can hit that max, you know, rank of damage. And it's just depending on, like, how much money or time and research you're willing to spend, you know, to figure out how to reach that cap. So I've been trying to do that uh, just before he beat the game for funsies. 
See, I've been trying to figure out as much about the game as I can, but since I'm on the opposite side of the fence as you, as in I don't have a 3DS and I'm planning to get one oh, soon, no. okay. I can't I can't play the game. Like Animal Crossing and Fire Emblem and that game are all on my to-buy list, but I'm not there yet. After tax season. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you. Soon. Yes, very soon. But you actually have a character in that game as well, Bravely Default, that is very different from your character in Danganronpa. <laughs> Yeah, he's he's very different from the characters I usually play. It's Dr. Kata. Um, he's one of the uh, mini-bosses you fight in the game. Um, basically, you go through the game, and the more bosses you beat, the more um, jobs you unlock. Um, so, you know, there's a knight boss, there's, um, there's a white mage boss, um, and my guy is the, like, chemist boss, even though his, like, job is called Sav Maker, which I think is really funny. Um... So yeah, I am Sav Master Kata, um, and he's 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 really like I've heard from a lot of people like they get party wiped by him for some reason, and I found out why. Like, so he he has this move called Dark Breath, and what it does is it does damage equal to the amount of health he's lost in the battle. And since he's a boss and he has a crap ton of health. Um, usually it's a one hit kill if he casts it later in the game, but that's not why party wipes people. The reason is people turn on this thing called damage dispersion. All right. So what that usually does is when you get hit, it spreads the damage around the entire party. I don't right? like that at all. <laughs> right. Exactly. Usually it's, it's like, oh man, you know, I don't take as much damage, but with Kata, you know, he's doing so much damage to you of Dark Breath, it literally one-hits, one-shots your entire party if you have that on. So people get really confused. They're like, what the, what, what the hell, you know? Um, so it's really fun to hear, like, the, the saltiness that comes from <laughs> players. Yeah, I was about to say, there must be some kind of evil satisfaction knowing that you're a boss that's hard to beat in an RPG game. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it is really fun. I'm like, ho, 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 ho. Ho, 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 ho. It's like a dream. It's like an evil, <laughs> sadistic dream. <laughs> but no, it seems like, uh, you know, a, a lot of the fans, especially I've noticed the two games they're playing, are those two games. And so I'm glad to see that you're in so many uh, handheld games recently. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, it's, it's, been, uh, it's been a real, real pleasure working on these games. Like, I, I, really, I really enjoy every character I get to do. Like Kata, um, I... I loved to do because he just the voice was not something I usually get to do a lot, you know, like that, like super villainous, like irredeemable, you know, he, he, he studies from like the Kefka school of villainy, you know, <laughs> like the outrage. He even has the eye makeup. Um, and it was just it was just so fun and like cathartic to do. And it was great. It was really great. Well, the plus side is if you haven't been cast in a lot of those roles recently, maybe, you know, a lot of studios will say, hey, he can do villains, too. Let's give Perhaps. him more villains. <laughs> Perhaps. That would be very fun. That but would be very fun. We're going to take a short break here on 91.8 The Fan, but don't go anywhere because our special guest isn't. So keep it tuned to your favorite station where we play everything you want and nothing you don't. Hey everybody out there, you're tuned in to 91.8 The Fan. You're in my corner and my special guest is still here, alive and breathing. More or less. Okay, that's good. Maybe <laughs> maybe drinking too, we don't know. <laughs> but for all the fans out there that want to, you know, keep up to date with what you're doing, do you have any projects that you want to pimp out to them? Anything that you're working on that you can talk about? Um, Let's see. Uh, obviously, Bravely Default just came out. Um, Fire Emblem's still out there. Um... Lightning Returns just came out. I did some stuff in that. I don't remember what, but I'm in there. Um, <laughs> I actually still have that in the wrapping because I got that too. in in Danganronpa on the same day, and I was like, choices. Cho okay. Ditto. I, I I picked up I picked up Lightning Returns, and it's still in the package. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna play this, play this as soon as I'm finished with Bravely Default, and I've been playing Bravely Default for the better part of two weeks almost. You know, so it's like, I don't know when I'm gonna get to that, but. Anyway, I'm in there. I'm in there somewhere. Um, ah, what, can, what else can I talk about? There's something I'm working on r right now that's really awesome, but I won't be able to talk about for, like, months. Um, 
And Always I, fun. <laughs> I know it kills me because it's so cool. Anyway, um, what else can I talk about? Um, I can. I guess I can say that uh, Exilia Two is coming out sometime this year. I can't actually say I'm in it. I don't think. But hey, that's a game coming out. <laughs> that's happening. Well, you're in a few shows, I believe, as well. Oh like, yeah. Yeah, like Excel, Excel World, for example. Uh, I was, yeah, I got to do some self stuff in Excel World, some stuff in uh, Sword Art, um, some stuff in, oh no, I can't talk about that yet. <laughs> <laughs> I almost did. I'm glad you stopped yourself. Yeah. Then, then you would have gotten uh, in trouble. Oh no. <laughs> soon though, I think in a month I can announce that. But um, uh, so yes and no, I can't talk about any of it. Um, NDAs. Yeah, no, we don't want you to get hurt by the NDA ninjas. Even though you're, you know, you're Chinese, you should be able to fend them off. Still, we don't <laughs> want to get you in trouble. I think, I think just the behind the scenes stuff kind of set up this whole interview for for yeah. racist jokes. Thanks a lot, little Kribo. I blame you. Thanks, Martin. Yeah, it's all your fault. <laughs> but for the fans out there that want to stalk you on the internet in a nice way, where can they do that? Uh, my Facebook, uh, at KG Tang on Facebook and KG Tang on Twitter. Um, I have a I have one of those Ask FM things. Um, do you know what I'm talking about? It's like one of those, like, it's that website where you sign up and people can ask you stuff. Um, yeah, didn't it used to be like Spring something or another? Yeah, I don't know if they're like two different things, but um, uh, what is it? It's ask.fm slash KG Tank. And uh, if you ask me something on that, I usually respond to it. Like, people have asked me to, like, do a couple lines as Owen and a couple lines as, like, um, Hagakure, like, they asked me to do an Old Spice commercial for Hagakure. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, sure, why not? I'm, on, I'm, I'm recording auditions anyway. I might as well just throw this in. I'm trying to, trying to imagine him in the Old Spice commercial, and I, I, it's really difficult for me to imagine him with, like, wet hair because his hair is so crazy in general. <laughs> so I can't even imagine his hair. It just stays up regardless, like, yeah. in, no matter what. I wonder if he has like a bathhouse scene like uh, Taka and Mondo's characters. Oh my God, that'd be amazing. <laughs> that would be pretty funny. Like his his hair just absorbs all the moisture and gets really big. <laughs> it's like That's a poodle. That's the entire scene. <laughs> like a perfect poodle. <laughs> like someone tries to walk into the room and it's just filled with hair. Oh dear. That's kind of scary. <laughs> but amazing the at three. the same time. Or four or five. Or, or the four. side story. The revenge of Hagakure's hair. <laughs> Well, for the fans out there that want to meet you in real life and ask you about his hair, um, do you have any conventions or events coming up that you can pimp out? Absolutely. Um, I am going to... Let me just pull this up. It's uh, A&G Con. Uh, A&G Con, April 4th through the 6th, and that will be in uh, Kentucky? I think it's Kentucky? Let me double check. It is in... Kentucky, yeah. So I'll be there, um, and I might be at Anime Expo if any of y'all are around. And that's um, that's I think that's it for now. Um, I'll tweet and Facebook about more as they come, as per the usual. I'm pretty sure everybody just goes to Anime Expo just because. Yeah, yeah. that's <laughs> I a fun mean, time. Drink with friends, you know. It's really hard to find some of you guys. Like, for us, when we go as press to that convention, we're like, oh, we randomly spotted that person across the hall. Run, go, go get them, go. <laughs> you know, it is, it is pretty hard to track down, like, a single person at AMA Expo. It, it can be insane. And sometimes the area is really insane, too. So, yeah, yeah. But a lot of you guys go there, and so I think a lot of the listeners will probably be there as per usual because it's the biggest convention in the U.S. So, Expect hugs and glomps and all that other stuff. As long as you guys ask, please don't glomp. And... <laughs> like, I, I've seen this before where people, like, run up to a voice actor and they glomp them and they fall fat, flat on their face. Oh, no. And I'm just like, oh, why did that happen? Yeah, just just give me some warning in advance and I'm sure we will hug it out or glomp it out or what have yous. Bro just please don't tackle me from behind. Yeah, that would be kind of scary. It's like, <laughs> I'm being robbed. It's L.A. <laughs> oh, God, why? <laughs> I'm being robbed by the old Spice Man. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cosplay. It's yes. fine. <laughs> but is there anything else you'd like to tell the listeners out there? Um, 
thank you for all your guys' support. Like, I, I, I posted about this a little while ago, but, you know, I've been doing this voice monkey thing for, like, about eight years now. And I really appreciate that a lot of you has have kind of gone on this journey with me throughout the entire thing. So, you know, I really appreciate it. And I really love what I do. And, yeah, uh, hopefully we'll be able to do it together for years to come. Do it together for years to come. That's not how that's supposed to come out. But there you go. <laughs> it's okay. They can infer that in any way they want to. Yes. <laughs> but, no, thank you for talking with us again. We always love having you on the show. Yeah, I love being on the show. Maybe maybe in the future sometime I can come back and we yeah. can chat more about nerdy stuff. We would love to just chat about nerdy stuff, whether it's stuff you're in or whether it's just nerdy stuff in general. Because yeah. I, I found it actually really ironic earlier when you were like, I'm going to nerd out on you a moment about Bravely Default. And I'm like, does he realize he's on an anime radio station? <laughs> <laughs> it's like everyone listening is pretty nerded out. <laughs> But no, thank you so much for today. And for any of the listeners out there that missed any of this interview, don't fret. You can find it on the website within the next few days. So keep your eyes peeled to 918thefan.com and your ears tuned to 91.8 The Fan, where we play everything you want and nothing you don't.